Well, today I'm just going to start off talking because I don't know what is going to come out of my mouth. And that could be dangerous. For 20 years, I have been between a very little bit of time, a one or two on the pain scale, the majority of the time a seven or an eight, and a lot of the time a nine or a ten. And that's not something I typically say because people do not believe you. Do I look sick? Do I look like I'm in pain? Today is a good day. I'm actually around a four or five, and when I finish, I will be higher, but it'll be nap time. And you'll hear the little pitter-patter of my service dog running in and out, checking on me. <laughs> so excuse the feet. I want to just mention some things that I don't think is being discussed very much out there. And it is something that is very, very important to our healing. And we wonder why years and years and years go past and there's no healing or there's little healing or some healing, but there's not true healing. I am not in society. 20 years, my prime, I am not in society. Why? Do I expect to go to a doctor to get the magic pill? If so, well, I'm going to be greatly disappointed because there is no magic pill. Sorry about that news. That's just kind of the way it is, and it doesn't feel good. Healing, if you are sick or chronically ill, whatever you want to call it, that is your full-time job. And if you don't make it your full-time job, you will definitely, probably, not heal. Because your body needs every ounce of what you've got from your mind, your body, your spirit, in order to heal. And you actually, for a bit, have nothing to give to another. And many people don't understand that until you explain that to them. And part of my advocacy is I am begging doctors, PCPs, neurologists, pain specialist, when you figure out after a few visits, kind of the overall picture, the best thing you can do for us and our family and our situations and our relationships and our healing process is ask to bring the family in or friends, whoever is closest to us that we see a lot, so that you can explain what's going on and the possible side effects they may see so that they're not surprised. You know, we tried this and it came across and it was no one's fault. If anybody's fault, it was my fault. They thought they were in trouble. Well, they were in trouble. <laughs> because things were done that were not very nice. But it's not to get in trouble because how can anyone know unless you tell them? It is an educational type of visit. That's what it is. That's all it is. If you have questions, I'm here to answer. And if the patient needs to step out, then the patient can step out. In fact, maybe that should be a rule. 10 minutes, the patient goes to the bathroom. <laughs> so that the right answers or questions can be answered. 
because people are not they, they don't know they don't know so my journey is no different than almost over 90% of other journeys now no I didn't do research on that I have a little bit of brains <laughs> And when I am on a group with thousands and thousands of people, and this is what I see all the time, except for maybe two people, I can pretty much safely say, 90% of the time, you're out of luck. Sorry about that. So let's talk about it. Let's get it out there. Do I want to spend the rest of my life like this? No. But you know there is a common thread out there that people believe it is my sole responsibility without any help to get well and heal. Now let me add a little portion in their expected way. That is putting an awful lot on our shoulders. Now number one, it is my responsibility to search for ways to heal and to obey and to do them, to try everything I can, to be desperate in wanting healing. That is my responsibility. No one can talk me into it. But I can't do it alone. I can't do it alone. Now if I had a broken leg because I was skiing on the tallest mountain ever, my job would be to do whatever I'm supposed to be doing for my leg and to take care of myself but what about those that are with me? Do they just go, ta-ta Kathy, ta-ta <laughs> it's your deal, see you down, sit down at the bottom best wishes, we'll pray for you You look really good, though, so it couldn't be that bad. I know a good doctor. You know, if you did this, this, and this, and this right now, you'd probably be fine, and you could just get, get through it. It's no big deal. Does that sound helpful? Think about it. Think about what would be helpful. You know, I think about the 20 years, and you know what I'm thankful for? I'm thankful that I have TBI. Because I cannot remember anything that has been done or said except very little. I am so thankful. You can't imagine how thankful I am. <sighs> there are no words. Because if I could remember everything, I don't think I could handle it. Here's the problem. My memory may not remember the words, my body remembers the feelings. And until that is taken care of, healing will never be 100% correct. And let me tell you why I know that for sure. Is I have listened for years and years and years of my family telling me this. Well, 
I spent many hours <clears throat> in my profession <clears throat> studying for the test. But I didn't say anything because I wanted them to get it for themselves. I wanted them to know how to cope in life. What do you do? So I sat and I listened and sometimes it was very hard because it wasn't educational. It was accusations. Accusational? if that's a word. Sometimes when you have TBI, <clears throat> you just make up your own words. <clears throat> so, the day of the accident, I knew I was hurt. <laughs> and you know I'm hurt if I'm 20 years later. But the day of the accident, yes, there, there was injuries. I have a thought process. And unfortunately, when you're in the medical field, <laughs> thought processes are not good <laughs> because you overthink things. I'm dazed, I can't think. I get out of the car, I'm totally shocked. I live through it. I'm standing there zoned. Who knows, maybe it's a seizure. And a cop, a policeman, a wonderful young man, and witnesses were lining up along the freeway, and a couple of them got up and stood by me, kept inquiring how I was doing, and I'm fine. <laughs> and finally, I looked at the policeman, because I'm thinking, you know what, guy? You probably got better things to do than sit beside this young, cute, 40-year-old lady. <laughs> Anyway, I didn't say it quite like that. His answer was, you won't get in the, uh, the uh, ambulance, so I'm waiting for you to fall over, and then we'll just stick you in the ambulance. And I remember being so shocked. You think I am going to fall over? I mean, hello, I'm fine. Give me two weeks. I'm going to be good as new. So what's going on in my head? Number one, what usually goes on in your head? When you're in your 40s, the prime of life, you've got teenagers, and you're looking at college, and this is with love, okay? I don't want anyone to think this is not about love. You're looking at college. You want them to have the best. You're trying your hardest. You're working and you're putting aside things. Everybody's sacrificing. You're not the only one. And you think, you know what? I'm not sure if that ambulance is covered. <laughs> that are the, that's the crazy things that go through your head. If you've ever been in an accident, you can probably list the crazy things that go through your head during that 10 seconds that last five hours, it's ridiculous. So do we have the money? Do I really need it? And then came this part. I have my emotions under control. I am under control. I am not crying. I would like to scream. I would like to holler. I would like, I, I'm scared. Everything is under control. Once I lay down on that gurney, I will lose it all. Lose it all. Do you think I'm going to choose to lay down on a gurney and lose it all mentally? No. I think we can agree. So, <laughs> I made my phone calls, assuring everyone that everything was fine. I, 
I met my husband and I'm thinking I, I really don't want to go to the hospital. You know, when you work at one, you, you, you either know the good, the bad, the, the good, you know, whatever. And I just, and then there's that financial bit. And you're, you, you know, why don't I just ask for pity's sakes? But I don't. So, what do I do? I'm arguing with myself and instead of what I wished but how can anyone read your mind is for the person with me to say and that can be anyone I don't care what you say you have just been in a pretty good car wreck you are going to be checked out. No, I don't think anything is broken, but we don't know what's going on inside. It won't hurt to go in quickly and get things checked out, right? <laughs>